to his knee, holding on to his knee and down. Torn ACL. Derek Rose, as far as I'm concerned, is finished. Good, but like I said, if it is where um, it's taking me a long time and I'm still not feeling right. Chapter one of the return. Oh, he's back. I'm D. Rose, and this is The Return. I have waited a couple of weeks because they call it pre-rehab, where they try to strengthen it as much as possible. I was almost walking regular. You have some people that have ACL tears, and they go a whole year without getting surgery. So I went a couple of weeks. I had to get surgery. An ACL tear occurs when the upper leg twists whilst the lower leg and foot remain planted. This causes the tendon to tear and usually get, causing pain and instability. One incision must be made for a camera and to give fluids to the knee. Two more to give the surgeon access to the ligament and a final tiny incision to anchor the new ACL. After looking around the inside of the knee, clearing away the damaged ACL and searching for additional damage, the surgeon will create incisions through the femur and the tibia, both opening at the ligament. The surgeon will then take a small piece of the hamstring and pull it through the holes. It will be anchored by a grapple at one end and a bioabsorbable screw on the other. Rehabbing the ACL is almost as important as the surgery itself and is crucial to returning the knee to its original strength. Working on my upper body strength, working on my balance, on my core, it's definitely been tough, but I'll be all right. I know it's going to help me in the long run. Derek Rose's injury and recovery is a stereotypical example of the leaps and bounds that sports medicine has made in recent years. But it hasn't always been this way. The field of sports medicine is relatively new and ever improving. About every 25 seconds, a young athlete visits the emergency room due to a serious sports injury. Thankfully, however, the innovations in this field have made treatments more efficient and more effective than ever before. Why don't we delve into the history of sports medicine? Ernest Tay Groves carried out the first successful ACL surgery in 1917. He took grafted connective tissue and rerouted it through the knee joint. At first he failed, but he kept trying and reported sporty success. Just Fontaine was forced to retire due to a fractured tibia and fibula. Just four years prior, he had scored 13 goals in a single World Cup, easily the record. Now this injury only sidelines athletes for one year. Imagine how much farther he could have gone. In 1974, Tommy John permanently damaged his UCL. Dr. Frank Job gave him a 1 in 100 chance of returning. However, he came back and won 164 games after his surgery. At that time, chances of recovery were slim, but now the chances of returning are up to 92%. In the 1980s, sports medicine was a lot more primitive than it is now. Treatment techniques were usually just prolonged rest, and occasionally a brace was used for prolonged immobilization. 
In the 1990s, treatments evolved to be more about gradual strengthening and stretching. Anti-inflammation also played a huge part. Ultrasounds and other electronic stimulations began to be used more and more. Bo Jackson was forced to retire due to a bone injury that could have been solved today. Imagine how far he could have gone if he wasn't forced to retire at 28. In the early 2000s, with more and more running injuries, doctors turned to A-stim therapy, which incited muscle regeneration rather than babying the injury. The focal point of sports medicine now is tissue regeneration. Also, research into the field of platelet-rich plasma injections is expanding. We can now also predict when injuries will come up. Just take it from Sherelle Williams, a physical therapist. Also, research that allows us to predict and prevent injuries. For example, based on research that looked at ACL injuries in young soccer players, we can now perform a basic movement screen and predict which players are more prone to injury, and thereby we can train them with appropriate exercises and movement patterns. The future of sports medicine is entirely up in the air. However, there may potentially be more research into stem cell therapy, which may eliminate the need for surgery. However, remember that the future is entirely up to us, because innovation is our creation. <laughs>